So this is Iowa Life Changing, and it's through the Iowa Department of Economic Development. And I found a really great map. This is renewable energy. Oh, here's wind. Oh, okay. I think this is it. So this is the state of Iowa. This is um, actually from the American Wind Energy Association. And it's dated April 23rd, 2009. And it shows um, what I was doing in terms of uh, wind energy, uh, in terms of its wind energy economy. Now, this is 2009, and so we're actually going towards the end of 2010, but I'm sure there will be another study and a new map um, that shows e an even greater increase. Um, but as you can see that these are, the orange circles are wind farms that are in operation um, with, with the number of installed turbines. And in the Des Moines area, we, we do have a lot of wind energy companies, but the wind farms are more in the rural regions. A lot of them in the western part of Iowa. Um, going towards, um, like I mentioned earlier, Minnesota. And if you happen to go northwest, like Minnesota going north, or if you're going towards Sioux City or um, South Dakota, if you're driving along the highway, uh, you'll find those wind turbines uh, waving at you, um, glittering, uh, hopefully not in your eyes. Um, but, but even um, in the southeastern Iowa, um, you have a farm here with 325 turbines. Up here you have a farm with 251 turbines. And so quite a lot is being done um, in, in the state of Iowa uh, for um, wind energy. It, there was a time when um, there was a time when Iowa was, ac was actually number five. Um, it was behind states as, such as Texas and California and maybe Minnesota as well. But in terms of wind energy um, market share or uh, existing turbines, we're number two uh, these days behind Texas. Texas is unique. Uh, it's a unique state. It's right there on the Gulf with um, access to oil, um, to uh, trade uh, ports, and then to endless, endless sunshine, um, and even uh, timber and other other um, kinds of, um, I would say, treasures. And 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 so Texas is a very unique. It's almost like a country in itself. And naturally, with the oil crisis, you do have people who, oh, and 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 also and, and also with um, Houston um, being basically in an international city, and then Austin having um, quite a bit of um, computer technology. Um, Texas is unique, and you know, even in terms of renewable. Uh, you would think, well, that's an oil state. What, what, what are they going to do, you know, with renewable? But you do what you do have in Texas is a labor force, a labor force trained to do hardcore um, construction uh, research um, and um, work with technology and heavy equipment. Um, and so, even though there isn't you know, we're in this, you know, economic crisis, you do have people who are not only educated, but highly trained, highly skilled. You also have infrastructure in Texas to where um, people, like we discussed, those companies that want to do that 180 degree turn, or if they've already started their initial research, they want to do a 90 degree turn in terms of, well, you know, we used to dig coal, but, you know, coal's got a bad reputation. It's polluting. It's creating health, health issues for our neighbors and for, the, and for the workers. You know, people are being buried underground. They're, you know, having a lung disease. And so, but we have equipment. We have infrastructure. We have access to the market. 
um, instead of coal, you know what? We're going to build windmills. We're going to manufacture um, turbine parts or, or solar. We're going to go solar. And so I think that's um, what's happening down in Texas. It's certainly happening here in Iowa where we have um, quite a bit of manufacturing in terms of John Deere, Firestone, Caterpillar, um, Pella, uh, lots of lots of traditional manufacturers who are saying, well, you know, we we know what we're doing in terms of building and creating and manufacturing. Our people are very skilled or trained. They're not afraid of those big machines. Um, we have access to the market. We have a big reputation, um, but we need to kind of make adjustments. And right now, I think John Deere is doing that. They're buying into the renewable energy field, and I and I say congratulations on that. Um, so that's wind turbine manufacturing. Um, also. Um, I wrote a little essay um, called When We Were Green. And um, I did that because I was kind of concerned that there's um, still uh, somewhat of a disconnect to people who look at renewable energy and it seems so rare, it seems so scientific, it seems so space ag kind of science fiction. And, it, and it's not. It's, you know construction engineers, it's project managers, it's people, you know, who wear the tool belts, um, it's, you know, it's you and me who, you know, used to write for one industry, but saw a need to change and go into a different industry. Um, so I wrote this essay called When We Were Green, and it's about, it's about my own family, um, where green was not just a notion, it was a way of life, um, out of necessity. And back to those um, oil drums that were, you know, split in half during the 19th century to create homemade um, windmills. There's nothing really that says we can't do it today, I don't think. <laughs> and maybe uh, um, someone who enforces local ordinances can kind of chime in on that. But I did have um, a family who made it through the Great Depression World War One and two rationing, um, a lot of chaos during the Jim Crow period and civil, civil war, uh, civil civil rights, um, uh, chaos where they were able to sustain themselves because they were um, independent and um, very um, self self sustaining is what I want to say. They lived in the rural regions of the South and they owned and operated a sorghum mill. They had big, um, vast fruit and nut orchards, and they raised timber. And they had their own industrial-sized kitchen gardens of vegetables and herbs, at which they canned, and they bred horses and raised chickens and pigs. And they had enough land to where they could um, fish and hunt for game. And so they were basically organic and free-range and biodynamic before those you know, were really internet search words, only they didn't call it that. They called it common sense. Um, but, you know, social, political, and economic upheavals came and went, and they were able to do all that back in the good old days. And I think we need to bring those good old days back and create some good new days, um, thinking creatively and doing what we can on a personal level, and regardless of what... Um, political leaders do. We can do what we can. I also had grandparents who turned on a dime that when it came to energy efficiency and recycling, everything had multiple uses. Nothing was thrown out. And they, if they didn't grow it, they raised it, and then they recycled it over and over. And so I think we don't need to go green. We just need to bring green back. Um, I heard there's that song, you know, bring sexy back. I think we can bring green back and be who we once were. Um, anyway, I'm interested in your thoughts. Definitely give me a call um, through Skype next week or chat in next week or um, arrange a visit. If you want to sit around the table with me, I think there are three chairs here um, and then we can all talk about what's really going on and what we need to do.
Okay, thank you so much, everyone, for listening to my very first show. Okay, have a good day.